So I've finally got everything up and running on the Surface Pro 1.8 gig. Uh, took a while to get everything going, as it always does with the new machine, but it does all actually work really well. So probably first thing just to take a look at is it's got a really good um, Windows Experience Index. Uh, particularly, and I'll just open this guy up. So particularly the disk did really well, I and mean, it's a solid state disk, it's going to score pretty well, but that's the same as I've scored on a brand new top-notch uh, SSD at home on my desktop machine. Um, let down by graphics, which is probably not too surprising. Mind you, not too bad on the game graphics, so obviously a bit of GPU acceleration there. Uh, RAM and processor are a little bit lower than, say, my desktop, and it's only got 4 gigabytes of RAM, uh, which is not sort of overly surprising, but you know, again, it's kind of like a big tablet, so pretty good on that regard. It's actually running everything that I normally use really well, so you know, I'll fire up Visual Studio, and I did actually just install some updates, so that might take uh, a moment longer, but yeah, you know, pretty quick. So that's good. Uh, obviously, I'm recording this with Camtasia at the same time, which puts a little bit of load on it, but for all intents and purposes, it's a fairly fast um, uh, laptop for the sort of stuff that I need to do. One thing that's a little bit odd is that because of the higher pixel density, depending on the app, some things render a little bit strangely. So, you know, it looks to me like the title bar up here, so start page, like the Visual Studio, looks a little bit small compared to the menu items. Um, that's a little bit more apparent if I go into something like snag it, looked a little bit odd. Uh, so when we look at Snagit here, these titles, in fact, all the fonts are just a little bit too small. But then you look at the buttons, and the buttons look a little bit too big. Uh, so I'm almost wondering if it's a factor of some assets uh, are rendering at sort of double the, the pixel density, or probably four times the pixel density, uh, in order to take up the same physical space, but obviously they're using twice as or four times as many pixels, so they're nice and smooth and other things are just using exactly the same pixel space but because it's a high pixel density display they get scaled down which is a little bit odd um, but then what happens so if we look at something like Internet Explorer and a lot of this is going to be hard if you're viewing it on sort of a, a normal res machine and of course YouTube is going to squish with this as well but everything that I see in IE looks really really sharp uh, now on my blog I'm using SVGs for things like the social media icons and the MVP logo and using CSS uh, gradients so all of that looks super 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 sharp and then I look at this little GIF image here of my ebook and it looks a bit jaggedy so it's actually the same sort of experience as what I get on a retina iPad or iPhone now what's interesting is when I flick over to Chrome everything here actually looks a bit blurry so it, it looks like it's not able to take advantage of the higher pixel density uh, and in fact, it, it kind of feels a bit like when we started getting written the displays on iOS and apps that were designed to take advantage of it, fantastic, looked really sharp, and apps which were still sort of rendering in the old pixel density all kind of felt a little bit clunky. Um, so maybe this is just a case of, you know, apps in general um, needing to adapt to this new paradigm of high pixel density. But certainly, you know, font there versus font, oops, font over here just feels very very different so although I'd normally use Chrome all the time on a on a, another machine on my desktop machine I think on this guy I'm going to be spending a lot of time in uh, IE which is probably not a bad thing because IE 10 is actually pretty good so that bit is good in terms of disk capacity now it's a 128 gig model and I know a few people have been a little bit upset that the drive shows somewhat less than that so it's showing 110 gig. Now, when you actually do go into disk management, you'll see that there are other petitions uh, which are used for recovery. So, let me have a look at our petition manager here. So there's our 110 gig, and we've got three other petitions, 600 meg, 200 meg, uh, and then nearly 8 gig. So, yes, it is a 128 disk. It doesn't mean you get 128. When I first uh, pulled the machine out of the box and checked the capacity, there was about 89 free. So, you know, I filled it up with 30 gig worth of stuff. Got 60 free, which is good. So I, I really would want to be buying the 128. If you got the 64, I'd be out of space already. 
Now you can put a micro SD card in, so I might sort of um, look at putting one of those guys in, put 64 gig in or something, and then put Dropbox and SkyDrive and that sort of thing on there. Uh, obviously I've enabled BitLocker on here as well, so uh, it's got TPM, it's got the ability to, to have disk encryption, which is quite nice. Uh, there is a pen, and I'm honestly not too sure what to do with the pen. Uh, if I sort of hover it over the screen, this is probably a couple of centimeters off the screen, and I assume you can see a little cursor rolling around. I can actually grab and drag stuff. I'm just yeah, I'm just not quite sure what the use case is going to be. I could draw with it, I guess. Um, but what I've tended to do is I've got a um, cordless mouse with one of those really, really small USB dongles um, that just works over RF. So I've got a, a nice sort of normal size mouse that I'm using with this. I could plug in my wireless keyboard and mouse back at home, and there's also a display port for the monitor. So you could actually turn this into really sort of a full-size desktop and, and that's you know one of the kind of nice things about this where you, you can actually use it as a, a pretty normal machine where you can be sitting at your desk using your big screen using your normal keyboard and mouse sort of the normal experience maybe a USB hub if you had other stuff to plug in and then you can just undock it and walk away and actually use it you know, like a tablet which is yeah, pretty cool um, the touchpad on the keyboard is probably just a little bit too small for my fingers. There's not really much extra space it could take up. The keyboard is pretty good though. I've got the uh, the type cover keyboard, so it's actually tactile. And you can probably hear it when you when you click it. It's got keys that move. There's a touch cover which is ten bucks cheaper, which is just sort of all all the one surface and doesn't really have any any, any kind of uh, feedback to it, which I, I don't think would be real great for typing. Uh, so obviously the other big thing is that there is a metro mode, like in everything Windows 8. Uh, and like everything in Windows 8, you know, you kind of keep going between sort of desktop mode and metro, no, I'm not meant to call it metro, whatever we call it now, which does make things a little bit odd. It Metro does sort of start to make a lot more sense when you are using touch. I mean, it's nice to sort of scroll through like this, particularly when you're jumping into native apps. Um, it's kind of nice, so if we jump into something I can actually show, you know, jump into something like the store where we just were, fills out quite nice. It's actually looking a little bit jaggedy while Camtasia is uh, recording it all, but you know, this is kind of nice. It would be a nice thing to sort of sit back and uh, watch movies on, particularly being 16 by 9 actually that would make it quite a bit nicer than the iPad. Uh, and I am installing Plex on there, so I'll be able to play stuff off my home media server, which would be nice. So that bit works pretty well. The old sort of paradigm that I'm experiencing on the desktop where, or on the sort of PC desktop at home, where you're literally in desktop mode, and then you, I don't know, double click an image somewhere, and the whole thing then opens up in uh, metro mode. That, frankly, is still a little bit jarring and then we take an image like that and we're in desktop mode and oh hey, here we go now we're in metro mode so i'm not overly keen on that and i've installed things like vlc so that if i run a video at least it um it stays in desktop mode and i can resize it and position it and you know that works kind of well but look i mean overall this is this is pretty cool i like it there's a lot of stuff that i do on my laptop or on my desktop pc that I'll be able to do with this. The battery's going to last a hell of a lot longer. It's a lot easier to carry around. Um, you know, it's only four gig, but to be honest, four gig's not too bad. And I suspect that even for Visual Studio, and this is actually the first time I've tried this, if we do things like create new projects, I think it's actually going to run um, pretty well. Let me just work with the so I can clean him out again. Uh, see for whatever. Like, uh -huh. okay, Certainly everything's felt pretty snappy, uh, particularly activities like this which creating assets on the disk. I mean, it's got a really, really fast disk speed. It's got a faster disk speed than my laptop running an SSD. Uh, so that's going to be good. And in terms of the amount of resources it's actually using, uh, you know, how much RAM we're using, two-thirds of the RAM. So, you know, it's not kind of using all that anyway. And... By the time you kill stuff you don't actually need, I'm going to it. 
that's not too bad. So let's run Visual Studio up on it. I mean, certainly it'll be good for sort of sitting on the plane, whacking out some demos and things. Um, yeah, so I reckon it's a pretty positively uh, resounding result. And, you know, for the price as well, it's just over 1200 bucks with all the taxes paid here in the US. Uh, I think it's a pretty good pretty good job. So to be honest, I'm wondering how much I'm going to use the laptop now. <laughs> so positive thing. Uh, the only downside again, I'm just not convinced about jumping in and out of Metro and desktop, but that might also be something that starts to make a bit more sense as I use it a bit more.